Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. The third scenario is a kind of Gorbachev scenario. Well, Fidel dies, Raul Castro assumes power, and he decides that it's time to loosen up the repression, time to make his peace with the United States, uh, time to modernize and become more pragmatic. And during the recent health crisis of his elder brother, we did, at least in the United States, read a number of positive comments in the sense about Raul Castro, and all of them were based on information, which I think is accurate, that in 1994 and 1995, when the country's economy hit bottom after the end of the Soviet subsidy, that it was Raul Castro who convinced his brother that there was a need to um, loosen up some of the economic controls, allow more self-employment, and make some reforms in the compensation system of the collective agriculture. And it's true, he did these things then, but the country was then pressed up against the wall. Today there's a new factor on the scene, which Mr. Navarrete didn't mention, but I will, that makes this less likely a scenario than formerly, and that is the existence now of a regime in Venezuela which is committed to propping up the regime and assuring its continuity through the gift of 90,000 barrels of oil a day, uh, probably at least a third of which is resold on the world market. This is not bringing prosperity to Cuba. It is not a replacement for the Soviet subsidy of old, but it probably provides a sufficient margin of safety for the regime so that the kind of tough decisions that Raul Castro made or was uh, forced his brother to make in 94-95 are not necessarily on offer. And I think we need also to raise the issue of Raul Castro's own position in what might be called the iconography of the revolution. As Mr. Navarrete pointed out, he played the role of the younger brother. He's not depicted in quite the same heroic colors in, in the history, you know, the narrative of the revolution. Everybody knows he's not a great public speaker. He has no charisma, no charm. Nobody, uh, no Hollywood movie stars go to Cuba and come back swooning about Raul. In fact, I was on a very high-level trip to Cuba I mean, high level in the sense that the other people in the delegation were very important. I was kind of a spear carrier. But anyway, I went on this trip, and we saw everybody important in Cuba, including, in, of course, including, uh, we were treated to a five-hour harangue by Fidel Castro himself. The one person we didn't see uh, was Raul Castro, which I found highly interesting. He doesn't go for big publicity. He doesn't generally appear very much in public. He understands, I think, the limitations of his own personality. But he's easy to underestimate. Um, as I put in my paper, I think, he may more nearly be like Stalin in the struggle for power in the Soviet Union after Lenin's death, more interested in the organizational aspects of power than in the pyrotechnics and oratory of power. And I think the idea that Raul Castro would suddenly turn around and become something quite different from what he's been um, at least in the first instance, seems to be unlikely, if for no other reason than the need to revalidate his revolutionary credentials. So the most likely scenario for me is the continuation of Raul Castro in power after Fidel Castro dies, unless, of course, Raul Castro dies first, which, by the way, is not inconceivable, although probably unlikely. He's about five years younger. Uh, he's thought to be uh, suffering from diseases related to excessive use of alcohol. Um, but these are speculations. I mean, when you hear these things from intelligence agencies in Washington, you have to take them with a huge grain of salt. Let's just assume he does continue in power. If he dies, I think 
he would be succeeded by a military dictatorship which would be disguised as a communist regime and actually be a kind of collective committee of these generals such as Mr. Navarrete has just mentioned. There's a wild card in the deck and that's dynastic succession because he has two sons, actually Castro has five or six sons, I've forgotten how many, I think five, uh, of which two have recently started to reappear in the Cuban media. Well, one of them had never appeared before, and the other had. The, the Fidel Jr., who is the son of Fidel Castro in his uh, marriage, his first marriage with, uh, with Marta diaz Balart, Fidel Castro diaz Balart, is a trained nuclear physicist, educated in the Soviet Union, was for many years the head of the Cuban Atomic Energy Agency, is about uh, 50 years old now, looks an awful lot like his father, right down to the beard, what his father looked like. Uh, he's suddenly been appearing in the Cuban media. Uh, the, the Cuban media has been generally very reticent to talk about Castro's personal life. And now, all of a sudden, Antonio, his son by his second wife, uh, who is a surgeon, has also suddenly popped up. Um, so we have to ask ourselves the question, are, we, are these people being put out there as insurance in case something happens to Raul first or happens too soon after the death of Fidel.